Okay, so um, a little, I don't know, I guess, social experiment for you. I want you guys to take one minute, I'm going to time you, and think about your problems, okay? Just a second, let me get a timer. Just the problems with your life, okay? Ready, set, go. Just think about it for a second. In all seriousness, just think about it. Okay, stop thinking about your problems now. <laughs> Couple questions for you. Um, did any of you fix your problems? Raise your hand if you fixed any of your problems. Nobody. Did anybody's anxiety go up a little bit? Raise your hand if your anxiety went up a little bit. Okay, okay. okay good. Good, that's what I was expecting. Um, now, you're going to have another minute, and I want you to pray about your problems. And instead of just thinking about them and trying to fix them, I just want you to give them to God and remind yourself of who He is and what He's done. Go. Okay. Now how do you feel? Anybody feel better than they did before? A little bit? Okay. Did any of you fix your problems? No, probably not. Okay. So there's a difference between thinking about stuff and praying about stuff. And I wanted to bring that up. I don't know if this is on or not. But I'm going to talk about peace. Peace is uh, freedom from disturbance. It's also quiet and tranquility. Okay. We're going to talk about peace today. That was the verse on your uh, handout today. Um, Thinking about your problems uh, doesn't give you peace. Uh, Paul says he considers anything he had to bring to the table as rubbish compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus and being found in him. Um, so stop thinking about it. Give it to God. And seek him. But I want to talk about, first of all, what does the world say about peace? And so I have um, some things here. What, what do you guys think? I have six things I wrote down. It's not necessarily exhaustive. Um, first thing I put down is you have to find better circumstances in order to get peace. That's what the world says. If you're out of peace, maybe buy something. Maybe uh, get a bigger house. Mind over matter, it says, you know. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. But, um, or, and in all seriousness, they say to try to conquer it yourself in some way, you know, humanistic ways of. Um, can you click it for me? I can. So get away and focus on yourself. I hear that one a lot about you know getting some me time. Okay, it's the last thing you need. Okay. You need some less of you time, more of Jesus time. Okay. What's the next thing? Go ahead. Substances. Okay. A lot of that. Now, um, whether it's alcohol or uh, whatever, 
you can think of, okay? There's lots of substances out there you can use. And it's kind of like the next one, medications you can do. You know, if you're not having peace, perhaps it's because there's some kind of chemical problem you need to get that fixed. I'm not negating the fact that there are some medical issues that need to be addressed, but uh, all too often we just say, oh, just take some of these, and then your problems will go away. Um, and then get more material things is the last one. So like I said about finding better circumstances, you know, a lot of times when people are really stressed, let them shop it. They'll, they'll, they'll buy something on the internet. They'll try to salve that with stuff. Um, so some of the things the world says about peace that at least I, I came up with. Um, how about flesh? What do you guys think the flesh says about peace? Um, go ahead and go to the first one there. Like we talked about, your flesh tells you to fill the hole with substances. Okay? The world will tell you to do it, and your flesh agrees with that. Yeah, okay. This is my escape. This is how I get gratification. Okay, go ahead to the next one. And that oftentimes leads to that. Um, because the hole never goes away, but the stuff you put in the hole goes away, hmm. and so you got to put more stuff in the hole. And then you go back, and then it's not as gratifying as it was the first time, and so you put more. Um, or your flesh will tell you this. Go ahead. You just can't have it. Hmm. Instead of peace, you just have to deal with fear. Um, or it'll tell you this one. Um, when you've been hurt, just to hold on to it. You gotta hold on to your pet bitterness, your pet grudge. And you gotta feed it every day and take care of it, and water it. That way it, it gets better. But it doesn't get better. What happens when you feed and water something? Mm -hmm. It grows. Okay. And the next one, sometimes you can even go that far. And you gotta even the odds if, if you've been wrong, if you're not at peace. Okay. So those are some of the things that I think the, the flesh says about peace and how to get it or whether or not you even can. What about Satan? What does he say? Hmm. Does he don't deserve it. He also says it doesn't exist. There's such a thing as peace, okay? And in a world that we uh, evolved into, there's no point to have peace. Lack of peace will drive you to get more stuff done. It reminds you of your sin. Why, why should you have peace if you have all these sins? Okay, those are our three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Um, but we're not on their team, are we? Mm -hmm. We're on Jesus' team, so uh, let's just take a minute here and look through some of the things Jesus had to say about peace. Okay, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And the next one, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And the next one, I don't know if I put this whole one on there. Go ahead. I'll just read it to you. It's a big one. I like this one. You can go ahead and flip your Bibles open to Luke 12, actually. We can read this together. A lot of our anxiety and stress comes from some of the issues he's going to talk about right here. Especially those of you who have families. Starting in verse 22, he said, um, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass which is alive in the field like today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Okay. There's a principle you have to understand, if you don't already. As Christians, we have a promise from God that he will meet our needs. Not our wants, our needs. Okay. Later on, Paul 
Paul talks about if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with this. Um, God will feed you, and he will clothe you. Okay? Do not ever need to worry about that. Okay? It's easy to get anxious about that. Very easy to get anxious about that. Okay? Um, but he will take care of you. People who don't know God worry about those things. Okay? But God knows that you need them. He designed you to need them. And he designed you to trust in him because he's the one that opens his hand to you and gives that to you. So don't ever be afraid of that. But instead seek his kingdom and he'll add those things to you. So that's what Jesus says about peace. Um, just some of the things. Um, but what does the rest of the Bible say about peace? Go ahead. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Mm -hmm. But you know God is the one that gives you sleep? The next one, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. But to let the peace of Christ rule in you. Go ahead, the next verse. Keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. It's like what Jesus said, seek first his kingdom, and it will be added to you. Keep your mind on him. It's kind of like earlier, when we were praying about our problems, instead of just thinking about the problems. Put our minds on Jesus. Turn your eye upon Jesus, you know. The next verse, be the peace of or the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. The next one. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. What is the law? The Bible. Yeah. Okay. The word of God. Those who love the word of God will have peace, and nothing can make them stumble. But to set the mind on flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. There's two ways you can live your life, by the flesh or by the spirit. Okay? Here's another one, talking about material things. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Okay? That, I think, is wisdom. Um, next one. Oh, there's, be strong and courageous, do not be... Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Okay? And the next one. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be, do not fear or be dismayed. Okay? Um, and I know that verse was really helpful to me in, in some of the things I recently went through, dealing with stress and fear and anxiety about upcoming circumstances. Um, I just felt like God told me, the Lord himself will go before you and will be with you. Yahweh himself will go before you, prepare the way for you, and he will be with you. What else do you need? Okay, if he's going with you, and if he's preparing the way before you, what do you have to be afraid of? Okay, the only reason you should ever be afraid is if you kind of get out of that way that he prepared for you. And he's not responsible for what happens to you, necessarily. If you go out from under his covering, there's going to be consequences. Um, the next one, said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. That's what God said to Moses. Uh, my presence will go with you, and I'll give you rest. And Moses, I love Moses. Uh, he, he didn't really benefit in a material sense, in a human sense, from anything that God had him to do. Okay? He, he lived in Egypt for 40 years. He grew up under Pharaoh's household. He was, was very educated. He had the cream of the crop, and then he murdered somebody out of his zeal to free his people, and he fled and lived in the desert for 40 years being a shepherd, and then God called him to shepherd his people Israel. And in that whole time that he was shepherding people of Israel, he dealt with their stiff-necked stubbornness and their foolishness again and again and again, and several times he just said, God, please kill me because I can't handle this. <laughs> people are crazy. Um, and God brought him to a point where, at least on one occasion for sure, several I, I, that I can think of, um, he interceded for Israel. But God said, step out of the way, I'm going to wipe them out with their sin. And Moses stepped in and said, no, please don't. And God said, okay. And obviously that was God testing him, because he is definitely uh, an image of Christ who is to come, our intercessor. But in a, in a material, human sense, Moses ended up dying in the desert. Um, he didn't ever gain the promise of the promised land. Um, but he had peace in God. He, I imagine he was very stressed out. Um, but God said, my presence will be with you, and I will give you rest. Um, 
Fear denies faith. They don't mix. Anxiety pushes faith away. Okay? Um, but perfect love drives out fear. I know we're going to get to the end of our lives and see that God had us in his hands the entire time. We talked earlier about when Jesus said, uh, how many of you can add a single hour to your life by, by worrying about these things? Interesting, because uh, we've, we know now that people who live stressful lives live shorter lives. Um, when you're stressed, your body is in danger mode. You're in like a survival mode. And what happens when you're in survival mode? If a bear comes out of the woods at you, you're not thinking about digestion. You're not thinking about your immune system. You're thinking about adrenaline and surviving. But if you're living in that kind of mindset consistently, well, then you're going to get sick way easier. Okay, You're not going to have a healthier well-being. I mean, Jesus knew what he was talking about. Okay, Stop worrying, and God will take care of you. Um, it's not good for you in a human sense, even. Okay. Um, that's something that they've taken a long time to figure out. But if you look in the Word of God, you can know that from the beginning. So I had an idea that I was thinking about, I, I, uh, that verse that we have on the front there. Um, I was trying to think, okay, what would peace look like? If peace was a person, what would it look like? Maybe something like that, I think. Or you can go to the next one. Just stop there for a minute. Um, you know, that, do you think that's what peace looks like? I'm going to suggest to you that that is not what peace looks like. I'm going to suggest to you that that is what peace brings. Okay? I suggest to you that this is what peace looks like. <laughs> Here's why, okay? That verse on the front of your bulletin says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will... What? Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, okay? See, God has given you peace to guard your heart and your mind, okay? So imagine peace as a warrior, an angel of God sent to protect your heart and your mind, okay? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, okay? Your soul is saved, okay? You're not going to hell. The devil can't do anything about that if you're in Christ, okay? But he can attack your heart and your mind, and that's what... Anxiety and fear does. But God has sent peace, and I don't think it's too far-fetched to suggest that Jesus is peace mm -hmm. to guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So next time that stress comes knocking on the door, um, you just point him over to your, your bodyguard and say, hey, go talk to peace. Go talk to Jesus before you come in. Okay, That's your bouncer. Okay? <laughs> so, and he's not going to let fear in, okay? But he has to be your bodyguard. You have to stay, stick with him. You have to stick with Jesus, okay? Um, I'm not saying stressful things aren't going to come your way, but I'm saying there's a way you can fight it. And it's really, it's just by hiding in Jesus and letting him do the fighting for you, okay? It's a warrior. Peace is a warrior ready for action, protecting your heart and your mind. He's a protector, okay? Um, now, he does give some, some caveats in that verse. You don't just get to cuddle up in Jesus and then forget about the universe. It's by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Okay? By prayer and supplication. We know what prayer is. What's supplication? So we're going to give you a definition, a working definition of that. That's okay. I have one written down. Uh, the action, <laughs> supplication is the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. Okay? So, lay before God. Okay, when uh, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against Jerusalem, what did Hezekiah do? When he got the letter that he was going to come and wipe out Jerusalem, what did he do? Did he go and ready his army and go scrambling and try to get things done? If you know the story, he went and he put the letter before the Lord, and he laid before the Lord and prayed about it. That is the right answer. Okay, and God answered it. He woke up the next day, and the angel of the Lord, who is who? Jesus, had gone through the enemy camp and slaughtered hundreds of thousands of them. You don't generally think about Jesus like that, but if you picture Jesus as something like that, okay, that's the peace of God which guards your heart and your mind. Okay? Um, so the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. How can you do that if you're letting fear come in and attack your heart and your mind? So seek the Lord. 
and give him that, or let him be your guard for your peace, okay? So I just want to leave you with that. I don't want to take a whole lot of time because I wanted to uh, invite Kelly up to talk about what's been going on with them. But um, So the peace of God is always available to you, okay? It's always available to you. You're never in a circumstance where God is just going to say, you can't have peace, okay? Um, the thing is, sometimes God's going to give you um, <coughs> not stress, okay, but... For example, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Okay? So if you're sitting there and you're stressed about something, if you're afraid, okay, maybe that's a check engine light God has given you. To check to see if something's broken, see if something's wrong. Okay? When uh, after the uh, Israelites conquered Jericho, they went over to Ai and tried to conquer it. It's a little tiny town, okay? It's a few thousand people defending it. And they went up, we will need our whole army. Let's just send up three or four thousand people. So they sent up a few thousand and they got routed. And 30-some guys died. And Joshua cried out to God. He said, what happened? What is wrong? Well, what happened was they had disobeyed God at Jericho. And Achan had taken some of the devoted things at Jericho. And they were told not to. Okay, so if something happens like that and your peace is taken away, well, you need to seek God. Obviously, you need to go and pray and offer supplication okay, before the Lord. And he will tell you what's going on if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, which if you're a Christian, you do. Um, and that's what God did to the Israelites. And so they addressed the issue, and then they went and conquered Ai. And the Lord went to the Lord. Um, so I want to leave you with that, okay? Um, peace is always available to you. And, um, yeah. The enemy attacks the heart and the mind, but the peace of God is sent to protect it.